The road rotary engine. If you're not familiar with the rotary engine, I encourage you to make your way on over to the flight line fence. This is an opportunity that you won't get many other places in the world to see a World War I rotary engine operate. We're actually going to run two of them today on that test stand right next to the Sopwith Pup is our 1918 Gnome rotary engine. We've got it mounted to that black test stand. They'll be running that around noontime. That's on your schedule. However, right now we're going to be running the 80 horse Lerone rotary engine. It's installed in our 1916 Sopwith Pop. This aircraft is a bit of a hybrid in our collection. And what I mean by that, we don't have an electric motor that runs it as well like a hybrid car. The airframe was vertical at very high altitudes, just sort of looking, waiting for the enemy to appear below them. And by attacking from out of the sun, from on high, you could get the, the jump on an enemy pilot, so the Sopwith Puff is equipped with that cutout, so the pilot can look up through the wing. He's not blinded by the wing. He doesn't have that enormous blind spot. feature to the rotary theory of engines is they really don't have a throttle as we think of it today. You may have heard what sounded like the Lerone throttling up and down. In the pup, the pilot has a fuel mixture and an air mixture control, and he's able to speed the engine up while he's sitting on the ground. Let's have a big round of applause for pilot Tom Rudder and all the volunteers, the ground crew. Just a note about what we heard a moment ago. 
It sounded an awful lot like he was throttling this up and down. And what he was really doing while he's sitting on the ground, he has he has a, a fuel mixture and an air mixture. And while he's on the ground, he has both hands free to sit and toggle those adjustments. But once he's in the air and flying, the pilot just gets the engine running at a constant speed, somewhere around 1,100 RPM. And he doesn't have two hands. Hands is a, a, a switch that will control the speed of the engine. It runs at full speed, half speed, quarter speed, and eighth speed. So when we get this engine running, you're not going to be able to hear me talking over the sound of the engine. I do encourage you to plug your ears if you have sensitive hearing. This is tremendously loud. But I want you to listen for those four different speed okay, settings. Go. As soon as this goes, just go We're getting a glimpse of just what a rotary engine is all about. You can see the push rods for the exhaust valve. It is a four-stroke engine. However, the way it operates is an awful lot like a two-stroke engine. The intake, there's no valve, there's a port machined into the, uh, the cylinder. This particular engine is known as a monosoupop. It's French for single valve. The only valve on this is the exhaust valve. For intake, as the cylinder, as the piston descends in the cylinder, it exposes that port just like in a two-stroke engine. And that's how the fuel is fed into the cylinder. Through the back of the crankcase. As you can see, as he spins that engine around, we see some the full half quarter and eight speed and when we get down to the eight speed timing and it's just manipulating the timing on this so it, it affects the firing so it's shorting out a certain band of of the firing order okay starting and starting and that's exactly what it was doing this airplane is equipped with a blip switch b-l-i-p he blips the engine it's an electrical cutout switch and he pushes that button momentarily and it cuts out the electrical system and it causes the engine essentially to stall but because it's a rotary it's still spinning it still continues with its inertia and momentum so when he lets go of the button it's essentially pop starting or jump starting the the engine reconnecting the electrical system that's how he loses speed to bring the airplane in for landing so when this aircraft flies you hear that blipping when he's on his final approach and he's stalling the engine, starting the engine, stop, start, stop, start, to lose airspeed. If he just held that button, the engine does continue to spin. It also continues to pump fuel through the system into the cylinders. And if he held that blip switch for too long and then released it, he could get a much bigger explosion than he would ever want in those cylinders. And he could be in for a very nasty surprise. So he has to flip it periodically, momentarily holding that switch over and over again. Now the gnome rotary engine, we're going to skip right by. We're moving down the line to our original. Now you're going to be running all on fuel. Okay. Then you start waggling those wings to get the fuel flocking around so it'll feed its way through the bottom of the, the fuel tank. Now this standard is painted in the color scheme of Harry Jones and his Old Orchard Beach Flying Service. Old Orchard Beach has one of the most significant histories in the world of aviation in the same okay. day. Harry Jones operated the flying service right off the beach. I'm not talking about the beach. He didn't do a big runway close by. He was a big flying on the beach. When the tide goes out, he had a major Thank you. 
propeller back and forth. This is a lot like kick-starting a motorcycle or hand-cranking an automobile. You need an electric starter to get this engine going. The pole starting for a lawnmower, and you still have a lawnmower with a pole start. So what Carl's doing is kind of feeling his way around through the cylinders, looking for real good compression, and he's actually spinning the propeller backward against compression, which will cause an opposite reaction to kick the propeller over in the proper direction. And he's hoping to find a, a cylinder that's at just the right point. That will allow the electrical system to fire off that engine. He says this is the one, ladies and gentlemen. who flew around the countryside from farm to farm, field to field, right, town to town, right. yep. yeah, they selling rides and wonderful experiences. Yeah. 
Good thing about John Mello, when he arrived at the airport, he did not rent a car at 98 years old. He was too old to rent a car, even though he could carry himself in. He put some muscle in the sucker. He's coming around town, all of you do his staff. Everyone clear of that front. Scott, you got it. It's all in the game. And you can see they've got a line of folks ready to crank. We'll see how long it takes to start this Rolls Royce Evil 8 engine today. We're going to start this one a little bit differently than the ones we've started earlier. You notice the size of that propeller. There's no way anyone could grab a hold of that propeller and flip it over fast enough and hard enough to get this engine yeah, started. It's a 12 cylinder, 360 horsepower, Rolls Royce Eagle 8 engine. This is the premier long distance okay. aviation engine. Swap over. Mike, no, swap over now, get Mike on it. Okay, Mike, Two Eagle 8 engines were used in 19... We're ready to burn! will wash the oil off the cylinder walls, which means they can't get good compression. So they may need to, yeah, they're doing it right now. So they're actually, they've got a great big long hose on an oil pan. They're sticking the oil, the spout oil, way up into the exhaust stack and cranking the engine over. So as they're turning the engine over, you're, we're still getting those four cycles in the four stroke cycle of the gas engine. We're still getting intake. We're still getting compression. We're not getting power on this. So we're getting exhaust. So part of that phase, those cycles, is we get, if you want to think of it as a suction or a vacuum or a lower, or a lower pressure in the cylinder. Steerman down there. Those two they give rides in down there. This is indicative of passenger aviation in the 1927. Flight from New York to LA was approximately an 18 hour endeavor. Or a wicker lawn chair. The pilot sits out the open. You can see the pilot's head bobbing up and down a little bit. If you look closely, he's cracking the hand of power magneto, which is required to produce the electricity to make this engine the spark.
Thank you. 